OpenAI released GPT-40 Mini and no one cared. It was probably the least hyped model that OpenAI has ever released, at least since their success of ChatGPT. Don't make the same mistake because what GPT-40 Mini is, is quite powerful. Here's Rune, one of OpenAI's employees, saying people get mad at any model release that's not immediately AGI or a frontier capabilities improvement. Basically, if it's not a massive leap forward, it doesn't matter. But He's saying, think for a second, why was this made? How did this research artifact come to be? What is it on the path to? Somebody replied to him saying, oh, you made a much smaller, cheaper model, just as good as the top tier model from a few months ago. Hmm, what are you doing with those algorithmic improvements? Sam Altman posted, towards intelligence too cheap to meter. 15 cents per million input tokens, 60 cents per million output tokens, MMLU of 82%, and fast. Most importantly, we think people will really, really like using the new model. I think in general, when new products come out, we expect them to be much better. More capabilities, more cool stuff, just more, bigger, better. If something comes out and it's cheaper, it's a little bit faster. It's cool, it's good, we just don't get as hyped about it. Now, keep in mind, this channel, I've mentioned this before, there's a very obvious sort of trend pattern that you notice as you start reading more and more of the papers that are published by, let's say, Microsoft and Google and the various universities. And that is the things that they're researching, those ideas tend to pop out as products in their fleshed out form, you know, six months down the road, 12 months down the road. And the thing that a lot of these research papers kind of seem to be hinting at is that going smaller could in fact be a massive leap forward. We covered this a few weeks ago, I believe, something called Route LLM. It showed that a model trained to route your queries to either the strong model or the cheaper, faster, but less capable model, that that worked really, really well. The researchers saw a cost reduction of over 85% on some of these tests while still achieving 95% of, in this case, GPT-4's performance. So almost all of the performance at a massive, massive cost reduction. Here's some research out of Microsoft. They created a model called Orca 2. Orca 2 did well. This blue line represents how it compared to other things such as Llama. This dark green line here, for example, is Llama 2, the 70 billion parameter. Notice Orca 2 is equivalent to it, beats it out pretty handsomely at some of these tests. But here's the interesting bit. Orca 2 attains performance levels similar or better than those of models at least 10 times larger, showcasing the potential of equipping smaller models with better reasoning capabilities. The dark green line, that llama model, is 70 billion parameters. The Orca model, 7 billion. It's 10 times smaller. Now you may be saying, yeah, yeah, so what? It's smaller. What's, what's the point? Well, there's a number of papers, including from Google, a number of Chinese re researchers, I believe Tencent was one of them, and many others that show more or less the same thing. And that is multiple agents working together, or you can think of them as multiple instances of GPT-4 talking back and forth create much better results. They sometimes refer to it as society of minds, and they're saying that their findings suggest that such society of minds approach has the potential to significantly advance the capabilities of LLMs and pave the way for further breakthrough in language generation and understanding. As you can see here, the blue is a single agent, so think of it as one chat GPT trying to answer a question. The categories are biographies, MMLU, chess move validity, etc. And multi-agent debate is having it sort of bounce its ideas off of yet another, let's say, GPT-4 model. The same model as itself, we're not mixing and matching. We're simply having it sort of flesh out its ideas, test them out against another copy of itself. And as you can see, the results are much better. There are two very interesting charts. On the left, we have math accuracy versus number of debating agents. So as you can see here, its ability to do math, how accurate it is, improves if you keep adding more agents to the debate. So if you've heard that saying two heads are better than one, that illustrates it pretty well. As you can see here, if you have one model, that's the lowest score, you add one, and you have a pretty sizable jump in terms of accuracy. And that continues. Now, 
from the other papers that I saw, it does plateau at some point. It's not like you can have infinite number of agents or a billion of them and that makes it much, much better. It does plateau, but up to a certain number, it keeps improving. But also, the number of debate rounds also improves the answers. So for example, in this case, there's a big leap from one round of debate to two rounds to three, and then it seems to plateau again. But having three rounds of solid debate seems to drastically improve its math accuracy. If you recall this study, Genitive Agents Interactive Simulacra of Human Behavior. This was a little town made up of little ChatGPTs running around. So each little person represented by this little avatar was its own instance of ChatGPT, of GPT-4, specifically that model. That was the best available at the time. And this paper racked up a very hefty OpenAI API bill because for every thought that the character had, for every sentence it uttered, you had to pay to use that model through the API. There were 25 agents and ChatGPT not only created the dialogue, but also created their innermost thoughts. Each thing that happened in that little world would be stored as a memory. Each character would have a memory stream and it would reflect on every memory and kind of gauge how important it was. If they said hi to somebody they already knew, that would be very low importance. If they noticed they were out of toothpaste, it would be medium importance. And if some dramatic life event occurred, it would be a massive important memory that they stored as such. That allowed them to reflect on their life and their most important memories to create certain insights. When asked about what they were interested in, what they're looking forward to, they were able to answer in very human-like, very realistic ways by analyzing their memory stream. All these research papers kind of hinted at the fact that while sure it would be nice to have bigger models with better reasoning capabilities, a lot of the limitations that we've had and a lot of progress that we could make could be done by creating these much smaller, much faster, much cheaper, but still capable models. And that's exactly what GPT-40 Mini is. For example, take a look at this chart. These are the model evaluation scores. Our new model GPT-40 Mini is orange. It beats out all the other small models, all the other fast models like Gemini Flash, Claude Haiku, GPT-3.5 Turbo. It's really even not that far behind GPT-4.0. The math here is probably the most stark visualization of that where every other model is in the 40s and the big and small GPTs are very high in the 70s, very close together. And OpenAI kind of talks about what the point of this is, what's coming soon. Keep in mind that very soon they're going to be on iPhones being the assistant, but potentially being able to do so much more. In one of the Apple's research papers that it released, they talked about how they were training a on-device assistant to basically kind of run the house for you. It would plug in with your thermostat, lights, etc. So when you spoke to it, it knew what you meant. It could kind of figure out what is it that you needed without too much explanations, right? If you said what the temperature is, it could figure out if you meant inside the house or later today, depending on, let's say, the time, your location, etc., basically becoming your on-device assistant. GPT-4 could do that, but it would be very, very expensive for these simple tasks. Turning up the thermostat or dimming the lights might cost you a few pennies here and there, running up quite a bill. But if that same assistant costs, for example, let's say a dollar per month, to run? Well, that's a whole different story. So here OpenAI is saying over the past few years, we've witnessed remarkable advancement in AI intelligence paired with substantial reduction in cost. For example, the cost per token has dropped by 99% since DaVinci 003, a less capable model introduced in 2022. We're committed to continuing the trajectory of driving down costs while enhancing model capabilities. We envision a future where models become seamlessly integrated in every app on every website. That's what this is. You want a smart phone, meaning an AI assistant in your phone, you want it in your thermostat, you want it in your lights, you want it in your watch, in your shoes, in your car. Well, you may not want that, but they do. Obviously, how this gets implemented is the difference between, you know, robots doing all the work while you can kick back and relax versus uh, some sort of a Black Mirror episode nightmare. And in terms of creating these lifelike worlds where each character has their own storyline, has their own memory stream, their own personality. Well, I think I recall hearing that this experiment here 
I believe it was a few thousand dollars to run. I forget how much in-game time passed. I believe the whole thing revolved around Valentine's Day. So maybe it was maybe it was simulated for 30 days prior to that. I unfortunately don't recall off the top of my head. But simulating those 25 agents running around thinking and making new relationships and observations costs thousands of dollars. So while you might be tempted to add something like this to a video game you're building, it would likely bankrupt you. But now we can see it in a whole different light. Here's that paper, the code behind that paper. It's been open sourced, generative agents, June Soon Park, research, and you can run this on your home computer. So keep this in mind, as the cost drop ever lower, there's a strong theory that the power of chaining these things together increases. The ability for them to execute agentic tasks improves. Also the fact that we're able to produce tiny, fast, cheap models that are as good as top of the line models from not that long ago, certainly seems like there's still massive, massive progress going on that are used for something like that simulation or coding. So I plan to stick this mini model in there and see how well it performs. I'll post a video on it soon. For those of you that noticed that I've been a bit absent for a couple of days, well, I just say that movie The Shining is eerily realistic. All work and all play makes Jack a dull boy. The point is we all need to take a break every once in a while or we go freaking crazy. I'll leave you here on that cheerful note. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.